Hey guys, the move that ends the bear market for Bitcoin could be occurring as early as 48 hours from now and as late as nine days from now. Within that two to nine day range, and specifically on the two days or on the nine days from now, we could very well be seeing the move on Bitcoin above that RSI line that's been downtrending for two years that could ultimately materialize in a break above macro lines that would end the bear market. Again, we could be seeing the move that eventually would end the bear market in either two days or nine days. Big stuff to talk about here. We also have stuff to talk about in the short term, and we also have to talk briefly about a diluted version of the four-year cycle and how that relates back into that trend. We're reiterating points we've made in the past in this video and expanding on them a lot, uh, but I'm gonna sound a bit like a broken record. I apologize for that. Uh, the, the, the importance of these moves cannot be understated, and hence it has to be repeated, all right? So big stuff, guys. Uh, without further ado, check out the pinned comment, check out the description, VIP sales ending in seven days. If you're interested in, in becoming a trader, interested in trading charts and, and learning how to analyze charts, check out the Crypto Academy courses website, link is in that description there as well. Let's get into the video. So something we've covered a lot over the past two or so weeks is the fact that we're going to be making a direction one move on Bitcoin within the week of January 9th to the 16th of January. There's going to be a directional move there. So that, that weekly candle is, is quite literally going to be the make or break for Bitcoin in terms of heading up or down uh, in, in the medium to long term. Uh, and we, we know this by uh, the weekly chart uh, RSI triangle. Okay, We have the RSI triangle, the weekly chart setting back from December 2020. That's coming to an apex in the following week, in the week of January 9th. In fact, we could even be seeing it's, it's actually possible that we could even be seeing a directional move uh, in, 20, in 48 hours because the weekly candle close currently actually closes in 48 hours. And if we see a, a clear break, which right now we're not really seeing at this point, if we see a clear break to the upside of downside, that directional move could actually be set in as soon as 48 hours from now. So it really is a big, uh, big 48 hours to nine days. You know, somewhere in that range is going to be something massive really happening on Bitcoin. Uh, it really is big times, big times ahead for Bitcoin for sure. Um, and you know, the reason why we know the reason why we can add so much weight to this triangle uh, on the RSI is, is simply because we've seen this before. We've seen consolidation patterns in the RSI in the past. Uh, you know, we had one in 2015, 2013, 2014. You know, when we finally broke that to the upside, that marked the bottom for Bitcoin. Same situation in 2018. Every time we break those RSI lines that form during bear markets, it, it marks the end of the bear market. So we're expecting a similar thing here. If we do break that RSI line to the upside, which again could be happening in the next 48 hours, uh, as per the introduction, the bear market could literally be uh, over. Well, it wouldn't be over at that point, but it, it would be the move that would clarify the bear market being over in the future uh, within 48 hours, according to the historical trend. Uh, and, and so, you, well, you know, you, you would ask, well, how, how do we know, uh, you know, because obviously an RSI breakout doesn't end the bear market. What actually would is what would result from that RSI breakout. As we looked at before, the RSI breakout historically has led to major moves. The major move we're looking at from the RSI breakout to the upside would be a break above the bull market support band. And in breaking above the bull market support band, you can see breaking above the bull market support band would also be a break above this yellow downtrending line stemming from June. And it would also most likely be a break above the 200 day SMA, which is where we got rejected from on the dead cap bounce here in March, which is obviously a major zone. So you know, again, it's not the RSI break that would end the bear market. It's the result of the RSI break. It's the fact that we'd be getting over that major resistance block, that red area between 18.2K and 17.7K, breaking that bull support band, breaking that yellow downtrending line, breaking that 200-day SMA, breaking above the POC as of recent, which is sitting around 19K, which is the point of control where the most historical volume has happened in this range. You know, breaking all of those things, uh, you can make a pretty good assumption you know, with that data backed up by the four-year cycle saying the bottom's in in that region, that, that, that the bottom is actually in. So yeah, it, it is pretty intense. The next 48 hours will be very telling. Uh, and and if not, if we don't see anything happen in the next 48 hours, we're still in this range, uh, then then the next week we can close next week in nine days will be very, very telling for sure. So heaps of big stuff going on for Bitcoin. Uh, we just have to rely on the short term here because obviously we, we want to be seeing that break to the upside. Um, but, but you know, the short term is not looking particularly strong, I'd say. Uh, you know, if we're looking at the, the volume, the volume has been decreased increasing steadily since, since November 14th. There's not many people interested in this range here. Uh, and we'd really need a massive surge of buying pressure, which doesn't really seem like it's materializing at this point. Uh, we've got, of course, a, a break back into the bear flag after breaking down below it, which is good news. But 
You know, unfortunately, uh, after breaking back in, we've gone straight into uh, an ascending channel formation. So that's not good news either. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of mixed signals uh, in the medium term and, and short term. In fact, I'd say it's leaning more bearish in the medium term and short term. Uh, and the reason why that's concerning is because obviously we have 48 hours here on Bitcoin until we have to make a decision. Uh, and, we, you know, we really want that decision to be made well. We want that decision to be made to the upside. Uh, and we don't want the short term to ruin that, which, which it has a chance of doing here. Uh, so yeah, big, big stuff. Uh, and it's getting very, very intense. Uh, and we really need to be watching these charts very, very closely. Uh, now, you know, the reason why it's such a big deal, and I'm getting to a very diluted version of the four-year cycle chart here. I've got, a, I've got a macro four-year cycle chart with all of the data on it, but this is a very diluted version so everyone can really understand it. The reason why it's such a big deal that we bottom out here, the reason why it's such a big deal that we go up uh, is because the four-year cycle predicted the bottom being in, in in Q4 or in January, which of course January is this month. So the Q the four-year cycle is saying the bottom is going to be in either very, very shortly or it's already in. So for us to bottom out later in this year, it's it's not really supported by the four-year cycle theory. Uh, and so if we were to extend past January and be finding lows in February, March, April, it's very likely that Bitcoin will actually get dragged down for a much longer period of time than the S&P 500, which we really don't want to see. So we do want to see the bottom be in here. Uh, and it would reflect uh, the current four-year cycle trend. I want to briefly interrupt this video to talk about the BitGet exchange. The BitGet exchange has five times lower fees than Binance, which is the biggest major exchange in the cryptocurrency market on futures. It also has zero feeds on every single spot pair, so you can trade spot for entirely free, no fees included. It runs events. Right now, it's got a FIFA World Cup event sponsored by Messi, the football player. It's got copy trading, strategy trading. It's got exclusive rewards and discounts in the reward center. It's got everything you need for a trader using exchange. This is the exchange I personally use as a trader for my everyday trading, and I highly recommend it everyone does so at the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel. Sign up using my referral link for exclusive rewards and discounts. That really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. For my fans from the United States of America, you can sign up using this exchange uh, with a VPN uh, and use the exchange with a VPN and just sign up using my referral link like normal and you'll be treated like a normal customer because this is also a non-KYC exchange. So make sure to sign up using my referral link in the pinned comment or the description below and without further ado, let's get back into the video. You know, this is a very diluted version, uh, but essentially the trend is this. Uh, year one of the cycle after the first halving, we go upwards. Year two, we go downwards. Year three, we go upwards. Year four, we go upwards, right? So every second year of the cycle, we go downwards. We've seen that occur multiple times now. We have the third uh, second year of the cycle go downwards, and we're, on the th and we're on the third year here. So this means we should be going upwards this year, which means we should be finding a bottom this year on Bitcoin. Uh, and that's why it's very important that this RSI triangle breaks the upside. Because if it does break downwards, again, it becomes very likely that the bottom on Bitcoin gets extended further past the point of the four-year cycle. Now, we can technically go downwards, okay? We can do that. Um, but, you know, th there's a lot of support, first and foremost. We've got an eight-year uptrend support line. Uh, you know, we've, we've looked into the power law uh, macro chart on Bitcoin as well, which is a on-chain data chart. Lots of things saying the bottom is in here. Four-year cycle says the bottom is in. We could go down further. Uh, and we could see a final drop, uh, and we could still respect the four-year cycle. The drop would just have to be very quick. It'd have to be done by the end of the month, right? Which is possible. Um, but ultimately, what's more likely is that if we are going to respect that four-year cycle, we'd be breaking upwards here. And so, yeah, the next 48 hours, uh, and if it doesn't happen in the next 48 hours, the next nine days, very, very important stuff, guys. So we really need to be watching these charts very closely. I've been bashing this point into everyone's skulls for like a week and a half. I know I'm sounding repetitive. I'm sounding like a broken record, but I cannot underestimate, I cannot understate, I should say, how major uh, the next, you know, 48 hours to nine days really is. This very well could be the end of the bear market, guys. So it's 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 nothing that we can understate. We have to keep reiterating the point until it happens, until that breakout happens, either up or down. We just need to talk about it over and over and over again. Because uh, you have to remember, guys, 70% of people who watch these videos uh, are people who are not subscribed to the channel. Most people who watch these videos are new to the channel. They have not seen this content before. So I'm, I'm spreading information to those people as well. So to my subscribers, I'm sorry for sounding like a broken record, but it really is the most important thing we need to be discussing right now. Um, I will say briefly as well, uh, Ethereum's in an interesting place. It's pushing up against resistance, uh, getting to a critical point as well, just like Bitcoin, in which it has an RSI triangle as well, uh, which we can bring up very briefly here and just take a look at that uh, brief little triangle there in the RSI for Ethereum. Same thing as Bitcoin. Everything on the R Every RSI chart on a macro scale is really getting really intense and they're all at resistance here. So it's, it's kind of amplifying how big this decision is, how the magnitude of this decision, the magnitude of this potential breakout. Uh, we've got the total cryptocurrency market cap sitting on support quite well and resting there quite wi uh, well and wisely here and, and finally seeing some upwards momentum. But again, it all kind of depends on that Bitcoin RSI. 
If you had to ask me where I think Bitcoin's going, uh, of course, I'm a believer in the four-year cycle. And so I would say that Bitcoin is likely to go up, right? I would say Bitcoin's bottom is likely to be in. That is my personal opinion. Uh, and that is what I'll stand by until proven wrong, uh, which again is possible. But at this point, yes, I would say it's more likely than not that Bitcoin has seen its bottom. Uh, and, and that's purely based on the four-year cycle theory, which I'm compelled to believe because it's a 12-year trend, you know, supported by multiple data point ranges and, and the presidential cycle. You know, it's, it's supported by a lot of things there. Um, and it's one of those things, you know, you know, the trend is your friend until it ends. Uh, and at this point, the trend has not ended yet. And guess what? Not many trends have actually have ended on Bitcoin. Uh, people like to think that this bear market has been breaking so many trends and all this. It's like, it's been ba it's been breaking trends that are based on moving averages, which aren't really trends because they're destined to be breaking eventually because of uh, broken eventually because of diminishing returns. So in terms of actual trends, it's like, well, it hasn't really broken anything. Everything Bitcoin has broken in this bear market where it's like the first time ever, uh, has is is broken simply because of diminishing returns there's no there's no nothing we can really point to that says it's the recession because you know put it this way bitcoin's down 77 percent in this bear market it was down 84 percent and 86 percent in previous ones so what is it really broken it hasn't dropped uh further than any other bear market and it hasn't dropped longer than any other bear market and the structure looks basically identical to other bear markets in terms of having a horizontal support and then a capitulation below so nothing's really been broken i i don't agree with that whole thing that bitcoin's putting in historical uh, first time ever this, first time ever that. I don't agree with it because all of those things uh, are based on, on uh, diminished returns, uh, which of course have to be broken eventually. So at this point, it's been a very typical bear market. Uh, it's been a very typical drop. It's been a very typical length of a drop and the four-year cycle has been respected up until this point. And hence, I have no reason to believe that it won't be respected. Uh, but it, but of course, it could be wrong. Uh, and of course, you know, it could get invalidated. But, but you know, again, it's one of those things we have to wait and see. Uh, and if it is invalidated, cool, we can readjust. But yeah, at this point, we're just waiting for that 48 hours here, that weekly candle close, uh, and potentially the next one next week as well. Uh, so yeah, lots to look forward to. Uh, the movement is coming. I understand people are getting bored. It's on the way, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for dealing, me sound, dealing with me sounding like a broken record. I appreciate your support. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Cheers.